In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Hyphon RC F722 Pro. Now, this is a pretty insane stack here for a couple reasons. One, its price. Two, its features. And three, it's going to be used on a new budget build in the upcoming days. Now, everything is linked down below and also the timestamps are down below. So you can go ahead and skip to whatever part of the video you would like. Some of the things we're going to be covering today are the advanced breakdown, the accessories, and also the basic connection guide towards the end of the video. So the advanced breakdown is, is more for the seasoned pilots here. So let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, we're going to start off with the accessories here and what you get for 65 bucks is pretty insane. So we get 14 gauge wire. I wish this was 12 gauge wire, but it's okay. We'll let that pass because not all, all stacks actually provide you this stuff. You do get an XT60. You get a Sanyo 1000 microfarad 35 volt capacitor, which is really great. And you should definitely add the connector to connect the flight controller to the ESC. You also get this PCB, which can be used for a couple things. One to tell you what each pad does. And also you can use it as a separator if you wanted to mount a VTX or something on it. So it has two uses if you ever needed that. The flight controller and also the ESC, which are both soft mounted, as you can tell. Now, this is an F7 microcontroller unit, so it's rocking an F7. It has dual gyros, so you can choose the ICM or the MPU 6000. We even have Bluetooth functionality, we have memory, we have our OSD, we have a 9 volt regulator and also a five volt, obviously. And just the amount of features this thing has for 65 bucks is insane. Wait till we get to the ESC. And we also do have a barometer. So if you ever wanted to do a GPS setup, this will be your best friend. Now for the ESC here, it's a Beale Heli 32 ESC with proper FETs here. This is the type of FETs that find on AirBot, even some iFlight and also some uh, Hollybro. So there are pretty proper FETs and well-known FETs here. Filtration is somewhat minimal for my liking, but it's okay because they do provide us with that low ESR capacitor. We do, we see have edge plating here, which again is really nice to see. And we also do have some holes for our low ESR capacitor, which is kind of nice that they've done it this way. It's better than not having any at all. We have a shunt resistor and it's using uh, the STM F0 uh, microcontroller unit which I think are the F1s currently. So let's go ahead and jump into the advanced breakdown now. All right, guys, so in this part of the video, we're going to be doing the advanced breakdown of this Hyphon RC F722. Now, there's a lot going on here. So let's go ahead and get started here, try to make this as fast as possible for most of you. So this flight controller is dual gyro. So we have the MPU 6000 gyro right here. So we have MPU 6000 and we also have an ICM gyro, which is that right there. So we'll just call it the ICM. The ICM gyro is a super sensitive gyro. And if you have slight vibrations, it might be very difficult to tune out. So you could just switch over to your MPU 6000 here. Now, also something really nice about this is this thing even has Bluetooth functionality. So you can see the Bluetooth circuit right here, which is really great and a barometer, which is right there. And if you don't know what a barometer is, that basically just tells you the altitude. It's not very accurate, but it's decent enough. So it's really nice, especially if you're setting up a GPS build here. And right next to the barometer, if we take a closer look, we also do have, I think this is eight or 16 megabyte of flash memory. So this is our memory chip right here. We still also have an OSD chip, especially with that nine volt regulator. So you'll be able to use the DJI setup or just a normal setup and still have your on-screen display, whatever you choose. And you still have that nine volt regulator which is insane for 65 bucks i mean if the esc was a piece of crap i would say oh no just forget it but the esc also seems to be really great and that's the reason why i'm setting it up on a new budget build to see how well those will actually last now if we take a closer look at the bottom side here we see that we do have an f7 and what else do we have here? So we have two regulators. They're cramped up right here, two switching regulators to be exact. We have a nine volt and we also have the five volt regulator, which is really nice. And it's a pretty beefy five volt regulator because if we take a closer look at the sides, well, this is the bottom. It shows it actually more. You can see ground five volt LED. LED five volt ground. So it's taken into consideration if you wanted to set up some LED strips on each of the arms, which again is really nice for such a price. I haven't seen anybody do that. That's a lot of things packed into this board and in every millimeter on this board has been utilized, which is insane for 65 bucks. I wonder how many layers and there's some debug LEDs here. So if your nine volts not working, then this LED won't turn on. I don't know the other ones just yet. Maybe this is status. There's one here. I think could be from Bluetooth. I don't know. 
And if we take a look on the left side here, now we're looking at the top side of the board, we see we have an SCL and SDA I2C I or I2C protocol here. So if you wanted to set up a GPS, that's where most of them end up going. And you also do have the ESC telemetry. Here's our nine volt. And we have actually have two nine volts in this area here. We have one nine volt there, another one here. We have the five volt and we have the camera. And the paths we're going to cover later on in the uh, beginner setup guide of the video. And if we also take a look here, what we have is we have signal five and signal six. So we could set up to six motors on this. However, obviously with the ESC, it's just four motors, but you can set up a six uh, motor quadcopter if you wanted to, or hexcopter to be exact. And if we take a look at the bottom side, there's really nothing else to it right here. C1 um, or, you know, camera input maybe, but it, it seems like they might have tried to do even a dual cam uh, setup here, but there's just so much, there's way too many things on here already. I think that's plenty enough. We can see we have really good filtration. We have really big capacitors. That's something really nice. You don't even see that sometimes on ESCs. So that's really great that we know that the, the voltage is being smooth, very good on these regulators. And again, time will tell when we go fly it. So yeah, this is pretty insane for, for 65 bucks with the ESC that you get. So with that being said, let's jump to the ESC and take a closer look at that as well. All right, guys, so in this part of the video, we're gonna be taking a look again at the ESC here. So it is a BL Heli 32 ESC, and we see we do have really big FETs. These are the same FETs that Airbot would use or you have Hollybro would use, and even, what is it called, iFlight would use. So these are proper FETs here. And that's a really good sign out of the box. Filtration is decent. It's not uh, what I would like it to be. But again, we're not getting that lately. But they do provide us with that low ESR capacitor. So uh, you definitely want to add that, especially if you're running 6S or 4S. I don't care. Uh, we also do have edge plating. I really don't like the design of the motor pads. But I guess as long as we have the edge plating and everything. And if we take a closer look, what we see is we have the, basically the power delivery circuit is all right here. And it's not really being interrupted because some ESCs have you know the FET on one side and another FET on the other side it's also good but it's always better to keep those PCB traces or the copper traces as big as possible in order to have the best current flowing down to your motors thus giving you good power delivery less resistance less heat now common sense also might tell you this is the top side of the ESC but actually it's not if you take a look at the numbers we see that it's actually not this is the bottom side so it should be installed in your quadcopter this way here we see motor one motor two motor three and motor four so this is this is the side that should be facing up when you do install this here and if we take a closer look at the logic side here we see we have the stm32 i think these are the f0s or f1s right here and we have the fet driver right here the overall look how clean that is that's a beautiful design right there uh, i wish to make a 4-1 esc this clean it's still very difficult for me but this is really really nice um really nice actually as we can tell this is a 40 amp and it is a 55 amp burst but it's really nice that they're saying that it's 40 amp because any other company could be like oh 60 amp oh 70 amp but this is really nice it shows that they might be onto something i mean i think this is like the maybe could be the new budget mumba stacks i mean uh that you know anything could happen right now so this is going to be pretty interesting i'm very curious to see how this is going to perform and it is going on the next build i've actually changed from the diatone uh, f50 to this because i really want to test this because 65 bucks you get a bl heli 32 esc with telemetry you get you get a lot you get a lot bluetooth 9 volt 5 volt barometer yeah, I mean, other stacks can't compete with that if this thing performs good in terms of performance or price. This might be a no brainer for most, especially if you're building a, a basher quadcopter. And uh, well, that's it for this part. Let's go ahead and jump to the basic setup guide. So in this part of the video, we're going to be connecting the FPV camera. And again, if you're new to this, there's three main wires we always need, which is the power, which is the VCC or five volt ground and video. The last wire is to control the camera settings. However, in this case, we're not going to need it. I never use it. Some people do, but we could completely ignore this last wire here. Now for the power input, usually these cameras take more than five volts, but I just really always recommend to set them up on a five volt because of the filtration. And if you put them on battery voltage, the noise from the raw battery voltage uh, will definitely cause lines in your video feed and make it absolutely unflyable and ruin your experience. So always stick it on a five volt. And that's what we're going to do here today. So here we have nine volt, nine volt, and here's a five volt. So we're going to go ahead and take this five volt pad right there. So we want to grab that one. We're just going to move it. You can take the five volts from anywhere you want. It doesn't matter as long as it's five volt. 
And here, just for the, just to make it simple, here's a ground wire. So we're going to go ahead and connect our ground. And right here we have ground. So this is where I would go ahead and connect my ground as well. And then the last one is going to be our yellow wire, which is the video feed, which is the signal here. And it's going to be on CI, which is camera input here. And we're just going to go ahead and solder that right there. And just like that, you have your camera set up. You don't need to do anything else. It's all good and done. Let's go ahead and jump into the video transmitter part. All right, guys, so right now we're going to go ahead and do the FPV video transmitter part. So first thing we need is our voltage. However, there's two types of video transmitters in the market and you need to make sure which one you have. There's video transmitter that only take five volts and some will take seven and above 24 to 36 volts doesn't matter so you need to make sure which video transmitter you have now we're going to cover both in this video first of all let's start with the 7 to 24 or plus volts these are called battery voltage video transmitter so we're going to call them battery voltage video transmitters and the 5 volt is just a 5 volt only so let's go ahead and start with the uh, 7 to 24 volt or the battery voltage video transmitter so what's really nice with this flight controller is they provide you with a 9 volt regulator. So this is much better than most of the other flight controllers because uh, those you would have to install the power directly to your battery and your battery voltage is not very constant and it has a lot of noise and it could also give you lines in your video feed. So having a 9 volt decreases that chance dramatically. So that means it'll give you very good video feed. So here's our 9 volt power for our battery voltage VTX. Now if this was a 5 volt, so hold on, we're just going to say 7 to 24 volts, or it could be more 36. Now if you obviously if you had the 5 volt video transmitter, then you're going to want to take a 5 volt from anywhere. So for example, I know there's some on the other side. There's also some down here. Here's a 5 volt. You could go ahead and use this for example for the 5 volt if you needed to so we're just going to say 5 volts so that's where you would get that 5 volts from now everything else is going to be exactly identical whether it's a 5 or a 7 volt but those are that's the main wire you need to concentrate on or your fryer vtx if you put the incorrect one now next we have is ground here so as you can tell it's first wire vcc ground and then rx so what we need now is ground so ground is this one right there and we could grab ground from anywhere you want so we're just going to grab this one just to make our life so much easier here so there we go that's ground and next thing we need is the rx which we're going to cover later on rx is basically the smart audio protocol which allows you to change channels and power through your on-screen display without the need of going to the video transmitter and pressing the button so yeah that that's what that's for i have a separate video on that we're not going to cover it too much in this video uh, so we're just going to skip that for now. We'll come back to it in a little bit. Now, our last wire, which is our usually our yellow wire, which is our video input for the video transmitter, is going to be connected to the VTX right there. So we can just go ahead and route that like that. Maybe there we go. Boom right there and just like that you have your video transmitter working. Now, if you wanted to connect smart audio or tramp protocol, whatever your video transmitter has, then you're going to want to go to a T pad. And as you can tell, they give us a T pad right there so we could install that right there to our RX that's coming from the uh, video transmitter. And if you ended up doing that, then UART1 will be in charge of your uh, video transmitters protocol. So in the beta flights ports tab, make sure UART1's peripherals is set to the correct protocol, whether it's IRC, Tramp, or Smart Audio. And if you don't know what that is, I have a separate video on that. Search for it, you'll find it. And well, that's really it for the video transmitter. Let's go ahead and jump into the receiver connection setup. All right, guys, so in this part of the video, we're going to be covering the SBUS receiver, also IBUS, and uh, if you wanted, also the TBS crossfire, so TBS. All right, so let's go ahead and start with SBUS since that's in front of us here. Now, for SBUS signal, let's start with the signal first. Uh, we're going to go ahead and connect it to an R pad, and preferably this RX2 pad, because this is what they've had in mind uh, when they designed it. So the RX2 pad will be SBUS right there. Now, since this is an F7 flight controller, so also IBUS will be connected in the same place. So both of these will actually connect the same. Now, for the TBS Crossfire receivers, usually you have a T pad and the RX pad on the receiver as well. And the way you would connect those is basically in the same place, but you crisscross them. So the T would go to the R right here. And then let's use a different color. We'll use blue. So here's the blue. We'll call it RX. And the RX is going to go to a T and T2. Make sure they're the same number. It's very important because this simulates one USB port, the transmit and the receive part. And just like that, you have your receiver's uh, signal set up. Next, we need power. Power is very simple, 5 volt and ground. So the red one is going to be 5 volt 
and we're just going to go ahead and connect that right there that's five volt and next we need ground obviously for power so i'm going to have to cross up here there we go and then we have to come back down and that's going to go right there and just like that we're done if you're using uh what is it called spectrum i think spectrum i think those are called and if you're using spectrum which you, the receivers usually take 3.3 volts then you have a 3.3 volt right there for you but if you're not using that you more likely you're going to be 5 volt i bus which is fly sky s bus which is fr sky and the tbs usually just take 5 volts and that's about it for this part of the video now, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you come join my Patreon where I do a ton of giveaways a month, especially new Patreons get their own giveaway. Uh, basically, if I get three new Patreons, there's a giveaway between them. Premium stuff, not no battery strap or stickers or anything. Flight controllers, uh, motors, quadcopters, whatever I have. I usually give that stuff back to you guys. And um, yeah, everything's linked down below. Make sure you check it out. Let me know what you think down in the comment section. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.